Welcome to lesson six. So far we have learned about the global plastic problem and today we're going to look at plastic in our communities, in our local areas, in Ireland and in the EU. I have travelled to many schools all around Ireland, very big city schools and very tiny rural schools. And on all my journeys, I see plastic pollution. I see it in the ditches, at the side of the roads, I see it in the fields, I've even seen it in trees. It's hard to find anywhere that's not affected by our plastic pollution. Today, we're gonna to talk about how we can make changes to this through our own actions and through engaging with decision makers. Sometimes I can't wait for rules to change or laws to be enforced. There's rubbish on the ground, I can see it and I need to do something about it. So I do a mini litter pick. Today, I'm gonna to give you some tips on how you can do your own litter pick. For your litter pick, you will need gloves and bags. I'm using gardening gloves, but you could use washing up gloves or other gloves. Just make sure they are reusable. For bags, I am reusing a bag that came as packaging for my waste, and I am using a washable bag to collect my recycling. I went out and about in my local area to do a quick litter pick. I would encourage you to invite some friends or family and have an adult with you when you go out and about in your local area. Lots of the rubbish I find is recyclable. If you're sure it's recyclable, pop it into your recycling bin when you get home. Everything else you can put into your rubbish bag. Be careful and don't pick up broken glass or anything dangerous. You will be amazed at the things people litter around the place. This is actually a plastic Christmas tree. Did you know that littering and dumping waste and even leaving your dog's waste behind is illegal in Ireland? You can report any large amounts of rubbish you find to your local authority or call the 24 hour National Environmental Complaints Line on 18503651121. As citizens of Ireland, we can all play our part to deal with plastic pollution. When I get home, I can put the rubbish into the waste bin and the recycling into the recycling bin. I also have a bin that is collected for glass too, so I can put any glass jars or bottles I find in there. If you don't have one, then you can bring them to your local bottle bank. If you organize a big cleanup, you can contact your local authority who will help you to dispose of the waste. It's great that so many people work together to keep our land clean, but why is litter such a problem? There's two main reasons. One is that it's an eyesore. It is not a beautiful sight if you see a pile of rubbish on the ground. And the second one is that it doesn't decompose. Our litter, even our compostable coffee cups, don't decompose if they're just left to lie on the ground. But what if all packaging did decompose? How cool would that be? A litter pick is great, but did you know that there are some people who have even decided to make looking after the planet their full-time job? My friend Tara loved the ocean when she was a little girl and she decided to grow up to become a scientist. I'm sure many of you love science and will become scientists one day too. Tara wanted to share everything that she has learned, so she decided to write a book. Tara is a plastic-free ambassador and she has this message for you. My name is Dr. Tara Shine. I'm an environmental scientist. I love being a scientist. You get to ask questions about how things work and why things are the way they are. Environmental scientists are really interested in how our planet works and how the animals and plants living on that planet, including us human beings, have an impact on the world around us. So I'm interested in things like climate change and plastic pollution and biodiversity. Lots of the things you're going to be learning about on Plastic Free for Kids. And one of the things I'm really passionate about is the fact that each of us can play a part in being an ambassador and a leader on climate change and plastic pollution. I think that's so important. I even wrote a book about it. This is my book, How to Save Your Planet One Object at a Time. And I wrote it because I want individual people, you, me, boys, girls, moms and dads right around the world to know that there are things they can do to help save our beautiful planet. Every single person's actions matter. Nothing you do is too small. So I'd love you to take that as your mantra as you become a plastic free ambassador. Everything you do matters. Soap. We use soap many times a day to wash our hands after the bathroom and before meals. 
We also use soap in the bath or shower to keep our bodies clean. Soap washes off the dirt and kills any germs we may have picked up on our hands. It also can feel and smell really nice. In recent years, it has become more common to see liquid soap in plastic bottles. This bottle can be recycled in Ireland, although we often forget to recycle the plastic bottles from our bathrooms. But remember, it needs to be clean, dry and loose in your recycling bin. Up until recently, we have used bars of soap. These are a better option for the planet. Try to buy soap that is in a cardboard box or is wrapped in paper or something recyclable. Or better yet, you can buy soap that has no packaging at all, straight from the craftspeople who make it at farmers markets and craft fairs. Aside from using less plastic, you'll also use less energy with bar soap. Liquid soap has a lot of water in it, so when transporting it around, it uses more energy. You will also save money as bar soap often costs less and lasts much longer. As Tara said, everything you do matters, from the soap that you buy to how you recycle at home. And as citizens of Ireland, who we elect as our decision makers matters too. You may not be able to vote yet, but the people that we elect do represent you too, even if you couldn't vote for them. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we make decisions to run our country. In Ireland, we live in a democracy, which means that we elect representatives to make decisions on our behalf. This happens at a local level with city councillors and county councillors and also at a national level. We have 160 TDs or Chapter Dála who sit in the Dáil and help to make the laws that we run our country by. TDs represent the people who live in their constituency and they raise issues in the Dáil that are important to them. We also have senators that sit in the Shannon. Between 7 and 15 members of the Dáil work together to form the government. The Taoiseach, Tánaiste and a number of ministers. They lead the many state departments that work to run our country. You've probably heard about the Department of Education and Skills, but I also want you to know about the Department of Communications, Climate Action and the Environment. Ireland is part of a bigger community of 27 countries that work together to make decisions. This is called the European Union or the EU. Ireland has representatives called Members of the European Parliament, or MEPs, who work to represent Ireland when the EU are making decisions together. Irish citizens are also EU citizens, and of course we are all citizens of planet Earth. Internationally, governments work together as part of the United Nations, or the UN, to create a safe and healthy planet for everyone. This is why we worked together to create the Sustainable Development Goals. Being a citizen means that we have rights. We have rights in Ireland, we have rights in the EU, and globally we have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We also have special rights for every child. And all our decision makers take these into account when making laws to run our countries and our communities. But with our rights come our responsibilities. You can't have one without the other. And for those of us who are safe, free and healthy, we need to act in support of those who aren't. We want to make the planet a safe, free and healthy place for all our citizens and that means we need to look after it. We have no planet B. Now while we do live on this planet, sometimes humans think that we own this planet and can do with it whatever we like. But actually there's many, many, many other species who've been living on this planet, many of which were here long before we were, like penguins. We need to remember that when humans make decisions, it doesn't just affect us. It affects the plants and the animals, the birds and the trees and the tiny insects and the mycelium running throughout all the soil and all the water molecules and the rivers and the rain and the oceans. We have a responsibility to make good decisions for all species. But we're humans and humans make mistakes. We don't always get it right first time, but we're learning. And the more we learn, the better decisions we make for everyone. How does our government look after our environment? In Ireland, the government works with the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, to make sure that the laws are followed to look after our environment. We also have many other organisations who support them in their work. We are always updating our laws around waste. 
Did you know that in Ireland we want to eliminate the need for landfill? We want to move away from a linear economy and move toward a circular economy where all our waste is put back into use. In the last lesson we looked a lot at recycling and today I want to focus a little bit more on reuse. Did you know that nature doesn't create waste? Nature reuses everything. If blossoms or plants decay and die, they rot back into the soil to nourish the living things around it. Composting is a way that humans can work with nature to turn our food waste back into soil again. In my house we have a caddy in the kitchen that collects our food scraps. We then take that and empty it into our compost bin or our compost heap that's in the garden. Then we leave it to the bugs and bacteria. They work to break down our food scraps and to turn it into soil. Then we put that soil back into our garden to grow more vegetables. Circular economy at its best. Nature has all the answers. We just need to listen. All households must dispose of their waste correctly. Lots of people in Ireland don't know that it is the law to put your food waste into your brown bin that gets collected for industrial composting or compost at home. If your waste collector has not provided you with a brown bin, then you need to contact them and make sure you get one. We also have EU laws and a very important one for us is the Single Use Plastics Directive. This will come into effect in 2021 and many single use plastic items such as straws and cutlery will be banned. You can learn more about this in the links below. And while I'm really excited about this positive step in the right direction, there are always more things that we can change for an even healthier planet. Your first ambassador action step today is to plan your simple swap. So talk to whoever buys for the house and ask them instead of buying soap in a plastic bottle to change to buying soap in a bar. It's really easy, they're next to each other in the supermarket, it's just about making that different choice. For your upcycle challenge today, I am challenging you to find a reuse for our plastic soap dispensers. So can you think of a creative or fun use for them? Can you think of something else they can be used for? Or can you create it into something else? We would love to see what you make, so please share with us using the hashtags PF4Kids or Plastic Free Ambassador. Today I want you to engage decision makers. So these might be your elected local councillors, they might be TDs elected to the Dáil, they might be um, MEPs who work at a European level. So I want you to introduce yourself, explain to them that you are becoming a plastic free ambassador, remind them that they are representing you and ask them to support more sustainable policies for our country, for our continent and for the planet.